really smoky, clear, straightforward. Welcome to whiskey.com where fine spirits meet. My name is Lüning, Horst Lüning. I'm the master taster of whiskey.com and today I have a big grin on my face. Um, I'm tasting the Lagavulin 12 years old and I got a box from Diageo for the special releases 2016. Thank you very, very much for this box. And uh, well, I have a lot to do in the upcoming days and weeks. Uh, there are 10 samples and a small book in this explaining all the uh, whiskies in here. And uh, here we have an Ochroisk 25 Brora, 38 years, Cambus, 40 years old, Kalila, 15 years old, Craig and Moore without an age statement, Glen Kinchy, 24 years, Lagavulin, 12 years. Well, this is the one to taste today. Um, Linkwood, 37 years, Menoch Moore, 25 years, and last but not least, Port Allen, 37 years. Ah, oh, I'm looking forward to all these bottles. And we start today with the Lagavulin, 12 years old. Uh, and uh, this is vintage 2016. And if you look carefully at the label, you see the 1816 and 2016. So this is a commemorative bottle for the 200th anniversary of Lagavulin. Um, it's 57.7 ABV, quite a lot. So I will have a, a little water with that whiskey because I do not taste more than 50%. Yeah, 53 was the maximum I had so far. Uh, and this bottle is quite expensive, uh, close to 100. Um, there had been the eight years old, also for the 200th anniversary of the distillery, uh, showing up in April, I think. Uh, at Black Castle, at the Keep of the Quaich meeting, um, we had the Lagavulin eight years old on the table, and a few weeks later I tasted it here on the channel. Um, so there are two of those bottles, and in the past, uh, this Lagavulin 12 years old, which was uh, issued 14 times already, um, there were enough bottles on the market so that uh, the year before was still on the shelves when the next one appeared. Um, with this 200th anniversary, I think uh, it will change. So better you hurry for that bottle if you're a collector than to wait until the prices uh, decline as it is uh, true with the Lagavulin eight years old. In the moment, I think there are too much of them or too many bottles of them uh, so that they reduce the price. Uh, well, uh, the pound lost 15% due to the Brexit uh, decision, but in the moment, uh, the pound is gained 5% again and uh, the third quarter uh, showed an increase in GDP in 5%. Uh, 0.5%, so uh, the Brexit wasn't that bad, um, as everybody believed. Um, so no idea where the prices will head to. Um, but a 200 years anniversary bottle is always in danger to be sold out fast. Um, wonderfully smoky, oily and bittersweet, pure in style and beautifully balanced with an inspiring sophistication and as much at home with food as after dinner, being lighter in aroma, texture and less drying than recent expressions. I had the 12 years old, oh, eight years ago, something, and uh, no, not eight years, six years ago, and it was mediocre then. It wasn't too, too good. Um, because it was matured in refill hogsheads, which meant that there was very, very le less, little left in the staves of the cask. Uh, so the maturation was not enough. <clears throat> mm -hmm. 14th in a series of special 12-year-old releases from refill American oak hogshead at least 
each at least 12 years old, so refill American Hawks as well. Uh, the commemorative 200th anniversary label available in limited quantities worldwide. So it should be available on the shelves close to you soon. <clears throat> the price is, yeah, there's a suggested retail price of about 80 pounds. Uh, no idea how this develops over the time. Uh, appearance, very pale gold, grey-green lights, slow legs. Uh, this is when the drops are running down the glasses. At one level, direct and straightforward, with immediate powerful smoldering peat smoke backed by fresh clean notes. In another sweeter dimension, though the aromas multiply first as icing sugar balanced by a cleansing note, then as lemons and spearmint above syrup on a warm baguette. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, body light and smoothly oily, palette surprisingly mild, smooth and sweet, with balancing salt, intense and cool, with fruity chocolate at first, then warming and smoky. Finish very long and refined. First smoothly cooling, then warming softly, pungent and smoky, with an appetizing bitter edge. Yeah, and here there's some history of the distillery uh, and showing the warehouse man checking the casks by hitting them with a hammer and from the uh, frequency he hears, from the resonance from the cask, he's able to see if there's tension on the staffs or if <laughs> there's a leaking leak somewhere. Yeah. Um, Lagavulin was founded in 1816, so a lot earlier than in the Highlands because there had been uh, this Excise Act uh, which forbid the production of uh, malt whiskey in the Highlands up to 1823, 24. Uh, and on the Highlands, uh, well, they produced whiskey a little, a few years early. Uh, the Lagavulin was bottled until 1987 with 12 years old. I was once offered a bottle in the mid to late 90s uh, for about 200. And today, uh, 12 years old, like a woolen, would be around a thousand or more than a thousand. Yeah, <laughs> I lost that. And since then, it was is bottled as a 16 year, 16 year old classic mod. And uh, the Distillers Edition of Lagavulin, which is one of my favorite, uh, was released the first time in 1998. Yeah. So, here we go. I will dilute this uh, a little bit, just to stay over 50. Yeah, that's enough. Really smoky, clear, straightforward. And then sweeter, yeah, little citrus and mint. And the mint is a little cooling. The smoke is smoldering, yes, and uh, that's there's an impression of, of a steak on a grill, on a barbecue. And a little bit of sweetness showing through. Not much, no. This was straight. I forgot to dilute it. Uh, I had a sip before. Um, and this is good. It's really, despite the 57.7, it's smooth. It's not burning. And this one will be the last one I will have today. So uh, my tasting buds are able to recover 
and tomorrow there will be no whiskey at all, the day after probably not, and, and then uh, my tasting buds will recover. Citrus stronger, smoke is still there, the aftertaste is warming in the beginning, a little cool in the nose with the mint, and now in the aftertaste warming. And uh, I'm adding just a few drops because there's li li really little over. Here we go. The last time a lot of fruitiness shined through and shine, shone through and uh, there was some uh, some sweetness as well. Fruitiness. Smokiness. The smoke is cooler now. Mm -hmm. Now it's sweet, really sweet. And I remember the first 12 years old I had as quite dry and not not big in expression, so just very, well, mediocre. And this one is really shows what Lagavulin is able to give. And the aftertaste, so they say bitter edge or bitter accents. No, no bitterness at all. So if you're a friend of Lagavulin, you should head for such a bottle. It's not only the 200th anniversary, which will give you in some decades some extra money if you decide to resell the bottle, um, but it's good as well. So this is a, well, a giant leap forward for the younger Lagavulin. The eight years old was... Mm, it was too young from my personal point of view. Um, the Lagavulin needs a few years more to mature and becoming smooth and well, full with these, all these expressions. Thank you very much for watching. Stay tuned. There's more to come as always. Feel free to share this video with your friends. Add your comments about this bottle in our whiskey database.